Hi, my name is Sarah Claiborne and I teach second grade at the Math Science Technology Magnet School. I learned about this thing last summer called whole brain teaching and it's just making sure the kids aren't just sitting there and staring at you like a zombie and it's that their whole brain is working and they're up and they're moving around and they're responding to you. So that's something that you see a lot of in my classroom. Um, I'll be teaching a concept and say, hey, turn and tell a friend what you know about this. And so they're actually stopping and verbalizing their thoughts and what they're thinking instead of just sitting there like a zombie um, and letting me spit information out to them. So that's something I think is really important for second graders because they're so energetic and they just don't sit very well. So you have to kind of accommodate them by getting up and moving around and being active and making sure their brains are active throughout the entire lesson. When I was a kid, I just got a worksheet and the teacher said, show me what you know. And now I teach the students and I give them this tool and I'm like, well, do you wanna make a telegami? And so they're making these different products, showing their own learning in their own words. They're also able to make videos, take pictures of their learning. So they're creating this portfolio that's gonna follow them instead of just sending home a worksheet. Having the iPads, I also make these flipped videos where I videotape myself teaching a lesson and send it home. And the kids are able to watch it with their parents and then talk about it and figure out what they don't understand before they come to school the next day. So then we're not all starting from square one. We can say, oh, you know how to do this, let's move on, or we need to slow this down a little bit. So things like that have really helped the kids. We play math games that are different levels, Google Drive documents that I've shared with different kids on the iPad, and just little things like that to give every kid what they need to succeed. I'm Andrea Disput. I'm the Library Media Specialist at Forest Ridge Elementary. I come from a family of educators, and when I say a family, I mean a family. I have educators all the way back to like my great-great-grandmother who taught in a one-room schoolhouse in Pioneer, Texas. She taught self-contained first through eighth grade. To become a librarian in Richardson, you have had to have taught at least two years in the classroom, and you have to have a master's degree. I get the opportunity to work with all of the students pre-K through sixth grade, and I get the opportunity to work with all of the teachers as well. The library fosters a passion for reading. Students can come in and find the books that they want to read and they're excited about reading. Based on what the students are learning in class, I try to incorporate that into the library. We also teach students how to take notes for their research projects that they do. I want them to feel that they are confident information seekers. One day I was walking down the hallway, this little pre-K student walked by me and she was like, hi Miss Disput, and I was like, hi sweetheart. And then all of a sudden she just stopped in the middle of the hallway, turned around, ran towards me and gave me the biggest hug. She looked up at me and she was like, I love you. And all I could do is just look at her, my heart melted and I was like, I love you too sweetie. And it's just, that's why being a librarian is great. I get hugs all the time the greatest feeling ever. It's like, you're Miss Library. The kids just, they love you and I love them too. And I give them that hug and give them a high five and send them all on the way to class. It's just, it's great to know that you're appreciated by the students. It really, it really is because if the kids didn't like you, they certainly wouldn't come and hug you. <laughs> they certainly wouldn't. <laughs> My name is Christina Fuller. I teach physical education at Lake Highlands Elementary. Teaching is my passion. That's what I went to college to do is to be a teacher. And so just because this is a gym doesn't mean that the teaching stops. I feel like there's so much more that they can learn. One thing I always do at the start of the unit is actually show the children a video clip of that sport being played. And I a lot of times take clips from college level. That way when I have fourth, fifth, and sixth grade, I can make that college connection with them as well. I use balloons with my younger students, so K and first, because tracking is a very important skill. They don't know what set means, they don't know what bump means, so I make sure they understand the basics, the vocabulary, the skills. And then um, I use iPads a lot. They've got a model of the heart that they can spread out and dissect and see the different parts of the heart. Halloween time, I like to talk about the skeletal system and um, I have an app where the kids can go and touch a bone and it pops out with a name and it actually says the name too. The kindergartner teacher came in and talked to me the other day and she said, I just have to tell you, and this is a bilingual class, so um, they're just learning English. And she said, I have to tell you, I, I drew a skeleton on the ground. I told the kids to label what they knew. And she goes, I figured that they would write foot and arm. And she goes, oh no, they knew the clavicle. They knew the phalanges. And she goes, I could not believe that my kindergartners were using these words. So for me, that was so rewarding. I loved hearing that story. 
I started doing yoga the last five minutes of class. Up on the board, I always have a yoga pose of the day. So every week they're learning something new. And so they know the last five minutes when we turn off the lights, turn on our yoga music, that they just stop talking. And then we do our yoga pose and it's neat to see them just stop and relax and know that they're safe and they can just let go of everything. My name is Nick Hamilton. Uh, I teach fourth grade at Audelia Creek Elementary. I engage my students pretty much by doing anything but be normal. I've had co-workers come up to me and they'll tell me, you know, Mr. Hamilton, your classroom is pretty crazy and kind of weird sometimes, and to me that's just a compliment. I mean, there's days you'll see me, I'll dress up as a certain character to teach a lesson to keep them engaged. There's times when we're standing up dancing, acting out vocabulary words to help us remember those words. In addition to superheroes, my students are really into Taylor Swift and I incorporate them into like math word problems and it's even gone to the extent to where my kids think that me and Taylor Swift are best friends and we hang out together so all of our word problems in math, if I involve the word Mr. Hamilton and Taylor Swift, it could even be like Mr. Hamilton bought three bags of chips for $12 and Taylor Swift bought six bags of chips for six. They get really excited to solve that problem just because it has my name and Taylor Swift in there. The thing I enjoy most about teaching my classes is being that positive male role model in their life. The more role models and the more positive people they can be around, the better. When we go on field trips, even if we just go to downtown Dallas, they've never seen downtown Dallas before. Their world is their little apartment complex right there. So it's really rewarding, really great to see my students be successful in my class and leave every day with a smile on their face, ready to take on the world. My name is Amy Hammer. I teach pre-AP and AP chemistry at Richardson High School. One of the great things about chemistry is that it's out there in the real world, whether it's something that a student can actually see with their own hands or whether it's a video on YouTube or the new Cosmos series with Neil deGrasse Tyson. They can find chemistry in so many different places. We have watched a couple of clips from the new Cosmos show. We watch clips on YouTube every now and then to see experiments that wouldn't be safe for us to do in our own classroom. So it is good for us to get out of the textbook or get out of a PowerPoint and see chemistry in a different way. Chemistry relates to biology and physics and environmental science and I try to help them see that it's in their food and the products that they use and the environment around them. And so I enjoy helping them make those connections to something that they see outside the classroom atoms and the elements around us move from an unstable state to a stable state. And so it's, it's fascinating that that's kind of the change that my students go through as they go from unstable, unsure freshmen into seniors who have a vision for the future of their life and they feel more stable and they feel like they know where they're going a little bit more. So it's, it's kind of neat that what we study in chemistry is what I see in my students over the years. My name is Chad Lawson. I teach Geometry Pre-AP, AVID 3, and Boys Basketball at J.J. Pierce High School. The biggest similarity between the three classes I teach, Geometry Pre-AP, AVID 3, and Boys Basketball is in all three, your students have to know you care about them. With the basketball team, to that kid who is your 11th or 12th man on the team, you still have to let him know you care about him and, and you can't show him that by how much time you give him playing. You have to show him that by how invested are you in him growing and developing as a player and as a teammate. I love when I can see like a tangible difference that I've made in their lives just to see that potential develop and just fruit from that, whether it's in the basketball court or um, in the math classroom or in especially AVID, they're going to be first generation college students. Our kids are in pre-AP and AP classes. They're getting accepted to multiple, multiple colleges, winning hundreds of thousands of dollars of scholarships. I think what RSD's investment in AVID shows is that 
We're not a district that is going to be satisfied with just holding steady. The changes speak for themselves, the results speak for themselves, and the community and administration are giving us support and I think we're on our way. In whatever profession that they choose, they're going to be problem solvers. And so this is just teaching them that here's your tools, here's your problem, you're at step A, can you get to step Z? And not only can you get there, but can you justify each step and how you got there? And so geometry is just perfect for teaching students how to become problem solvers. My name is Chris Pineda, and I am the band director at Liberty Junior High. I tell my kids all the time that the best thing I ever did was raise my hand in fifth grade and say I wanted to join band. I had no idea what to expect with band. All four of my older siblings were varsity athletes and then I came home with a tuba and my parents were pretty surprised at my choice. And you know, looking down the road, I ended up going to college on a full music scholarship to SMU and then I stayed to do my master's on a full music scholarship. And so my college was paid for because I chose to be in band. In the junior high level, we really want students to be involved in as many things as possible because it just helps create a well-rounded person and well-rounded student. And myself, I, I, was in, I played football all the way into high school and I loved the fact that I had the opportunity to play both the tuba and football. And what we do as the band directors and the coaches is, is that we work together to work out all the conflicts so that the students are never in a position to have to choose between sports and band and we, we try to work it out for them and here at Liberty we have three different bands and we group the kids with students that have similar abilities so that no one is ever really far ahead or really far behind and we truly believe that there is a place for everyone and that all kids can learn and improve and it's unbelievable just the transformation that a kid can go through while they're holding an instrument and just expressing things through their instrument that they could not express through words. Music engages so many different parts of the brain. It teaches dedication, motor skills, the dexterity of the fingers, and just the precision, the pulse. There's so many things going on at the same time that it just really helps them connect all those things together. Hi, I'm Corey Pratt. I teach sixth grade math at Carolyn Bucare Elementary School. I love Carolyn Bucare Elementary School. It's a wonderful school and wonderful kids and wonderful parents but because many of them do come from other countries, they don't have some of the same advantages that other kids have. Many of them are living um, four or five kids to a bedroom, parents in another bedroom. Many are single parent families and just socioeconomically, they're at a huge disadvantage. The majority of our school is on free lunch, um, free breakfast. These kids are getting every bit the education that other schools have with much higher socioeconomics. We teach to the same high level at this school that any other school teaches. Fourth, fifth, and sixth graders use the AVID study guides, binders, agendas to keep them organized. Doing as many things as I can with manipulatives, using videos uh, with other instructors who may teach it in a different way than I do. Action and motion really seems to help them understand a concept better and teaching it in a variety of ways. Can't just teach it one way. I think learning should be fun. I want them to come into a classroom and feel cared about, nurtured, but not baby. I want these kids to um, become independent thinkers, independent citizens, and patriotic citizens. I just believe that education is what unites us all and that's what's gonna make these kids successful. So I wanna provide an environment that they feel safe in and they, they care about each other, we care about each other, and it's mutually respectful. My name is Heather Robb. I'm a bilingual speech-language pathologist and teacher at Dobie Primary in the preschool program for children with disabilities, also known as PPCD. PPCD is the preschool program for children with disabilities. So we have children who have a disability, have been diagnosed with a disability, and they are three, four, or five years old. And we have a half-day program, and the children either come in the morning or in the afternoon. And through that program, it's a special education program, and through that program, my position is I am a teacher as well as a speech pathologist. 
The earlier you start, the earlier you are able to start working on some of those needs and the better the likelihood that the children will make more progress sooner. I meet the child where they are and then we determine a goal that's appropriate and that is needed to support their education. I thoroughly appreciate the fact that I get to be creative with them. My bag of tricks includes music, movement, and many manipulatives, and we vary those as often as we can with our units of instruction. We scaffold the instruction, we differentiate the instruction, we differentiate the environment. Everybody communicates, everybody learns. It's at different rates, different speeds, and it looks differently, but everybody does it. Teaching is the most primitive experience to the existence of mankind. We wouldn't be here if somebody didn't teach us what we needed to know. The Richardson High School Law Magnet instructs the in-depth study of English, social studies, and forensic science as cornerstones of reasoning. Since 1986, it has been educating students in the study and application of civil and criminal law. For the past three years, the tasks of teaching and directing the law magnet, coaching mock trial, and supervising senior internships has been tasked to one fearless and dedicated individual. Her name is Alexis Stern. This is her story. I'm the granddaughter of the House Majority Leader of California for a long time, and so I was raised breathing politics. I mean, I met Hillary Clinton in sixth grade. I was working campaigns with my mother forever. What's happening now in politics, the kids have so much fun because so many ridiculous things are happening. I get to teach kids who are interested in politics and government and law, and I get to teach them all areas of it. There's no area we don't delve into in those four years. And I don't care what their opinions are as long as they can use facts and they can support it. It is a skill-based course, and one of the biggest things we do is writing, writing, writing. They're coming here not because someone's telling them to or it's a state requirement. They want to be here. And it's like having all of these awesome children who are yours for 50 minutes a day and I get them four years and it's watching them grow and it's immensely rewarding. Just to see them care, to see them write a paper that is good, uh, to see them vote when they first can, it's, it's pretty cool.